right, everybody. So welcome back to another episode of Colton Posey Fishing. So today we're going to be talking about my favorite baits to use in the month of April. So stay tuned. This is something you don't want to miss. All right, everybody. So welcome back to another episode of Colton Posey Fishing. So if you're new here, I appreciate you stopping by. Consider subscribing. Uh, it helps out the channel a whole lot. Also, like the video. Um, it helps me out a whole lot. It gets me in the algorithm. Helps the channel grow, which is very important. And uh, either way, as always, if you have any questions, please drop a comment down below because I'm always willing to answer questions. That's how we learn as anglers is we ask questions and then we get answers, right? <laughs> so uh, either way, also, we do have members only. So uh, it's $2 a month. Uh, you get exclusive early access to all my uh, videos in the future. Helps me out with gas, tackle, all that stuff. You can do it great if you can't. It doesn't matter. I really appreciate you stopping by. But either way, let's go ahead and jump into my top five baits for uh, April. These are the baits that I typically use in April. And some of y'all may slap me on the back of the head because I'm not a bad, I'm not a bed fisherman. So I, I typically don't fish uh, for the bass that are on beds simply because, as I've told y'all a hundred times, uh, my eyes ain't that good. So I can't see them very well. I don't have good eyesight. So I just ignore bed fish altogether unless I just see them sticking out like a sore thumb. Um, but either way, these these baits, one of them in particular, you could use for bed fishing. So uh, don't be discouraged by that. But uh, I, either way, uh, let's go ahead and jump into it. I typically focus on um, spawning and uh, or pre-spawn and post-spawn fish. It's typically what I focus on just because, like I said, with my eyesight and stuff. Plus, I like to move. I don't like to sit still for long periods of time. It's one of the reasons I don't have forward-facing sonar on my boat. I, I just... I don't like sitting on one area for too long. I just enjoy moving while I fish. And if you haven't saw it yet, check out my power fishing video if you're interested in learning how to power fish. So uh, the first two baits we're going to talk about is very versatile. These are rattle traps, right? So everybody knows the good old-fashioned rattle trap. Well, I use two particular uh, rattle traps. Uh, one is a shad color to mimic, um, you know, the bass that are feeding on shad. But this is actually called the Booyah One Knocker. So it's kind of got that just that one big rattle in it. And then I also use the Berkeley War Pig. Uh, this is a crawl color. I typically use this when the water gets muddy or I get on a real good crawfish bite. Um, it goes through cover really, really well. I absolutely love the War Pigs. Um, these are the quarter ounce, I think. Yes, quarter ounce. Quarter ounce and three-eight ounce is typically what I use. I will go up to a half ounce if I'm fishing like Tennessee River system or something like that, or if I'm on a bite where the fish are eating big shad or something like that, if you get what I'm saying. But these baits, typically, I'm running them through wood, through rocks, stuff like that. Especially the war pig, you can basically throw this up into anything and it's ready to go. But um, one of the key features that I do on all my uh, hard baits is I swap out the hooks to Gamakatsu EWG hooks, okay? Um, the reason I do this is simply because I don't want, um, I don't want this thing hanging up uh, a whole, whole lot. Um, and the EWG hooks has just got a lot better hookup ratio in my experience. So I always swap them over to the EWG hooks. So if you're using these baits or something like that, or you're using any kind of hard bait and you're having trouble with hookup ratio, try swapping your hooks over to the EWG, um, you know, treble hooks. It, it helps. It's helped me a lot, I, or I think it does anyway. <laughs> so, but either way, this is a really good uh, bait this time of year. Shad color for when you're on shad pattern, that water gets muddy, or you get on a crawl pattern, use the crawl color. All right, the next two baits that I'm going to talk about is something that I use a whole, whole lot, uh, pretty much from now in the spring all the way through fall uh, up into the winter. These are uh, square bill crankbaits. So um, one of them I use a shad color. And the other one, I guess what? I use a crawl color, okay? Um, and guess when I go back and forth, okay? Shad pattern, crawl pattern, or muddy water. I use the crawl color. Now, this one in particular, this is the Lucky Craft. This one also, this is the Lucky Craft. So the same thing, swapping the hooks out. But I'm typically running these baits faster than normal. So I, I've got a good cadence. Uh, also, you can refer to my fire fishing video, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. 
but I'm using these around docks, I'm using these around wood, around rock, anything like that where the bait fish are suspended kind of high or if the fish are up shallow eating crawfish, then I've got the crawl pattern ready to go also. Now the other two that I want to talk about is one of my favorite bites to get on and that's a spinner bait bite. So um, this is the War Eagle River Rat and this is the Booyah Double Colorado. Now, why would I swap to a Double Colorado this time of year? Typically, if not just if the water's muddy, but a lot of these post spawn fish will set up and look for big bait for them to eat, but they're also not willing to chase something as hard as you know they typically would. So sometimes if you're on a real lethargic bite, but you got some good wind, you can swap to this double Colorado right here. And if you notice, I don't have a skirt on this. I took the skirt off because I typically put a swim bait on this. But either way, um, Kitech, Rage Swimmer, whatever you want to use, I typically use the 3.75. But I typically run this bait a little bit slower, especially if I'm in those post-spawn areas where those fish are staging up to recover from the spawn. Um, the River Rat, I'm using this in muddy water. That's it. If the water's super muddy, I'm using this bait. A while back, had a guy come from Missouri. Been a long-time subscriber on here to fish with me. We got up uh, on one of my home lakes, and the north end of the lake and the south end of the lake was very muddy. The uh, central part of the lake was very clear. So we wasn't catching much fish in the central part of the lake, so I moved us up to the north end, where I'd fished my entire life, basically. And uh, on that northern end, it was super muddy, and we wasn't getting a whole lot of bites until we swapped over to the river rat. So we swapped over to the river rat, and we were catching fish about every five to ten minutes. So um on channel swings and stuff like that so the river rat is a great option um this time of year especially for muddy water now the reason i take the skirt off if you didn't watch one of my videos uh on you know little bait mods that you can do the reason i take that skirt off sometimes is because the skirt has a lot of action so if i put a swim bait on this after taking the skirt off it gives it a little less action it's a little more subtle but it still has action in it it's something different that the fish don't get to see a whole lot on a spinner bait and then you know typically you get a little bit more bites off of it so that's that's a good little trick now the next two baits i want to talk about is obviously a favorite for many and that's uh that's a chatter bait um what for shad pattern and red for crawl pattern or muddy water okay uh this one right here in particular is the jackhammer this one also is the jackhammer. Uh, these are made by Z-Man. These are very good chatter baits, but they are fairly expensive. I only own probably uh, six of them, and they're both this color. I've got another one that's white and chartreuse. Uh, solid white or white and chartreuse, either one's really good. But um, these baits right here, they put off a different vibration in the water, and depending on what kind of action you want, you may want to swap between braid, mono, and fluorocarbon. Um, so if you're using a chatter bait and maybe they're swapping at it and they're not getting it very good and you're using monofilament, swap over to fluorocarbon and see if, you, if your catch ratio goes up. Or if they're still swapping at it, try to swap over to braid and throw this bait right here and it gives it a little bit different action and a lot of times your uh, catch ratio will go up that way. Now, trailers, that's going to be a big thing. On my crawl pattern, I usually run crawfish uh, type soft plastic. So like a rage tail or... Um, rage crawl stuff like that uh i will even throw a rage bug on this from time to time especially if i'm throwing up in heavy cover or if i think i'm close to like some uh fish garden beds or something like that now with this one right here i'm typically throwing a swim bait on it okay so uh like your rage swimmer and stuff like that or kitech whichever one you use or whatever you use uh that's typically what i'm throwing on these crawfish soft crawfish and then uh, uh soft swim baits on, on the shad pattern now, the other two that I want to talk about is two of my favorites to use, um, and that is uh, a football head jig. So, a football head jig is super versatile. Um, both of these right here are good in muddy or clear water. It doesn't really matter. The bold bluegill, um, I really like this particular uh, color right here this time of year. I don't know why, but this time of year and then on through summer, it seems like that chartreuse drives the spotted bass and the largemouth insane. So like we got some stones. But uh, either way, the crawl, the orange, the, this is a really good option for a crawfish pattern. 
Uh, so either way, I'm running. I'm typically running a rage tail on either one of these. Uh, the, usually the chunk, or either you can use a oh another good option that's a little bit cheaper. Young Christie Crawl. You can take them and cut a, cut a little, uh, like an inch off of it, and you know buttons right up to these. That's a really really good option. Uh, but try to match the colors together, keep it fluent, and it looks really really good. Um, but either way, this time of year, on through summer and fall, I'm popping this jig. Okay, so uh, I'm actually popping my jig and then letting it hit bottom and it's kind of a it can be a slack line technique but at the same time uh a lot of times they'll hit it as you're jerking up and then you can set the hook at that time so you kind of got to be careful with it but you'll catch a lot more fish as long as you're popping jigs and also you can target those fish that are on beds with these or particular jigs right here these are made by g money it's one of my favorite jigs um they got a lighter wire hook and a little bit smaller weed guard, but they got a 90 degree line tie and they don't get hung up near as much. They catch a lot of fish. I've made more money off these jigs than I have anything else. So, either way, guys, I appreciate it. I hope the video helps. If it did, make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.